Today, let's talk about the new simple-to-use voiceover tool that's on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve 20. I'll cover some media storage location tricks, what level you should actually record at, hint it's not negative 6 to negative 12 decibels, and three essential track level processing effects for voice. Brand new in DaVinci Resolve 20, when you click new project down here, it's going to prompt you for not just the name of new project, but also the media location. This is not the media location of where all your footage is stored necessarily. It's the location that Resolve is going to manage things like generated voiceover files or downloaded proxy files from the internet. Now, because I like to really manually know where all my files are going, I'm going to point you through my workflow, which avoids Resolve actually creating new folders for me. I'm going to create them myself so that they're not nested within folders, within folders, within folders. I don't like that Russian doll technique. So what I generally do is I have one root level folder that contains all of my footage assets that are used in a single project. And the reason we do this is because if I need to archive a single project, I can just archive the one folder and then all the footage comes with it. It's easy to unarchive later on. So the important thing is Resolve wants to create uh, three levels of folders when you create uh, voiceover files. One is it wants to create a root level folder that matches the project name inside of DaVinci Resolve. And then inside of that, it will create a folder called audio space files, spelled exactly like that. And then inside of that folder, there'll be a folder called voiceover, spelled like this. So if you pre-populate this on your hard drive before going into DaVinci Resolve, you won't have to worry about Resolve making folders for you. Um, it will actually make folders based off timeline names in here, but I'm okay with that. I use another application oftentimes called Post Taste, which is a great free application that you can download and you can create your templates here. But the main thing is you've got a folder called Audio Space Files and a folder called VoiceOver with no spaces if you don't want Resolve to make folders for you. So enough with that. I'm going to take this template right here and we'll start like this is a new project. I'll just duplicate it. And the project name, I'm going to call this one VO Demo 01. Let's just say that was the actual project name. And then what I'll do is I'll hit return so I can command C, get the exact name of this so it matches. When I go to the DaVinci Resolve, I say new project. This project is going to be called VO Demo 01. And the location of the media, I'm going to change the location here to tutorial mode. And I'll go back to 2025 projects. And I will put my location media to be right here. So what's happening is when Resolve goes to write folders, it's going to look and try to write a folder called VO Demo, but that already exists. And then inside there, it's going to try to make a folder called Audio Files, but that already exists. And then it'll go and try to make one called VoiceOver, but that already exists. So the point is, have one folder that all your projects are in, and you can leave this set the same time every time you go to generate VoiceOver files. So I'll say Open. We'll click Create. And now we're inside of DaVinci Resolve. If at any point later on you need to change your project media location, you can do so by going down here to the settings cog and you've got your master settings for a project. And you'll see there's a new uh, setting down here called project media location. I have mine set to 2025 projects. So that's where that's gonna be stored if you needed to change it afterwards. Microphone input selection. So before you even open up and get going in DaVinci Resolve, go to your Mac system settings down to the sound tab or anywhere in your operating system. If you use Windows, you'll have to tell me where that is. Under input and make sure you can find your recording device, your microphone, whatever you want to use. Make sure you can see some levels in there because if you can't see them here, Resolve surely is not going to see those. The other thing to pay attention to is sometimes you might have a slider here, which is going to set your input level if you have a device that doesn't have a physical dial to change your input level. Uh, just note where that is because you're going to change that to get the perfect record level in the section coming up next. Now that we have that figured out, let's take a look in DaVinci Resolve so we can make sure to use your system settings that you've set up here. So once you have DaVinci Resolve open, come up here to Preferences. We'll take a look at System. Then we have Video and Audio I.O. And then there's the Audio I.O. section. This is where uh, this is what I care about for this. This is going to be Audio I.O. Engine system audio and input and output device, I generally always suggest just leave this at system settings. If you just create your bins on a disk, you can use these or these folders on a disk, you can use these to auto create bins by just dragging them to the left side over here. It will automatically create those as folders, which can be really handy. Let's go into the cuts bin. I'll right click to create a new timeline. 
I'll just call this like 0715 uh, voiceover, sure. Because in order to record a voiceover file and resolve, it has to live on a timeline. And what's interesting, actually, I'm gonna drag my resolve interface over to a little bit over to the side here, is it actually generates a folder called whatever the timeline name is inside this very specific project name, audio files, voiceover folder. I'll leave this over to the side so you can see when I create it. And the other thing I like to do generally before I record the voiceover is I like to pre-select the bin I want it to land in. So if you choose the bin first, it won't just be in another place that I need to move later on. It's just part of my OCD, I guess. And I've got a little script over here I'm gonna read. I'm gonna click the brand new button down here. This microphone is our new voiceover tool. It requires no extra patching that you have to do on the Fairlight page. You just do it right here. So I'll click that button and we could give it a name. Maybe you give it the name of whoever the talent is. That's usually a good idea, but you don't have to worry because it will create a, uh, a unique identifier, six digit code to the file, which I'll show you. You have the option here to change your audio input, the recording track. There's an, one called auto, which will create a new track for you automatically. So it will not overwrite stuff that's on your timeline. Oh, by the way, Resolve is never gonna delete media for you when you're doing this. It's non-destructive. It's creating a new file as if you're editing it to that track. I'll just leave it to one, keep things simple. You have a three dot options menu here to change things like input monitoring, give yourself a countdown, a mute the timeline while recording. We'll take a look at setting audio record levels in just a second, but if you see levels here, you're good to push record and start recording. So I'll push record and we'll get some something laid down. Story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control for editors who live in the cut. Leave a little space there so you can hear the room tone. And we can take a listen. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control for editors who live in the cut. Now you'll notice over the side on this finder, we have voiceover. It basically would have created all these folders that go from VO demo audio files voiceover to the timeline name to whatever the, you know, the name we had chosen in this, which was just Chadwick. And it appends a one, two, three, four, as you continue on, along with a six digit unique code at the end. So it will relink files easily. So there's the voiceover, but how do we know what level to set our recording to? Well, the short answer is once this gets to yellow, you're too loud. So for instance, right now, I'm gonna actually turn this down, but I wanna prove a point to you. I want you to go ahead, please put some headphones on right now because this is unprocessed voiceover recorded with my USB microphone interface set to about the three o'clock position on the gain on the dial there, which is putting me, you can see over here in that sort of negative six to negative 12 range. Here we can listen to the room. Okay, I'm gonna dial it back now. Now I have the gain dial on the interface dialed to around the 12 o'clock position. So I went from three o'clock to 12 o'clock and you can see my peaks there are hitting somewhere more in that negative 12 to negative 15 range, but I'm not hitting the yellow at all in here. So once you start hitting the yellow is when you ideally wanna back down. Let's take a listen to the room. And now I'm gonna take the gain down further. Now the gain dial on the universal audio volt is at the nine o'clock position. And you can see my audio levels now are somewhere bouncing in that negative 30 to negative 40 range over here on this dial. I'm not talking louder. I haven't moved the microphone proximity to my face. Let's take a listen to the, how the room sounds now. And then here's all three recordings normalized to match levels afterwards up to negative 1.5 decibels true peak. My USB microphone interface set to about the three o'clock position on the gain on the dial there. Now I have the gain dial on the interface dialed to around the 12 o'clock position. So I went from three o'clock to 12 o'clock. Now the gain dial on the universal audio volt is at the nine o'clock position. That last example had the signal raised 30 decibels in post. And I heard no difference between that 
and one that was recorded much, much hotter at the three o'clock position on the interface. So the point of the story is the room level is what the room level is. So get the room as quiet as possible, get your subject as close to the microphone as possible, and try to aim for your peaks to be around negative 18 decibels rather than the negative six and negative 12 everyone says because you're gonna have so much more headroom in case someone talks loud. You can't recover those very easily, but you can easily pump up the volume later on. Hey, real quick timeout before we chat about audio processing, my name is Chadwick. If we haven't met yet, I'm not some AI bot. I finish high-end commercials here in New York and I've edited professionally for over 20 years. But more importantly for you, I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve Master Trainer, and I built this channel, created video tips with you in mind to help you get over any hurdles that you might have in this massive software. So please do me a favor today and subscribe. It's free, and it encourages me to continue sharing these Resolve tips that you're probably not going to find anywhere else. Audio processing. So if we take a listen to this track, story is everything. It was recorded pretty low, right? It's at that negative 18 decibels peaking, which is where I suggest you record at so you don't clip on accident. We're going to do the audio processing track level on the Fairlight page with only free stuff that's available. Uh, it's really a nice, easy way to do it. It's how I do my tutorials. One thing you might be unaware of in the Fairlight page of DaVinci Resolve, you can see these waveforms are kind of small over here. I can actually increase these without increasing this volume level, this gain level slider over here by just holding down Option and Command and then the mouse wheel. So option command with the mouse wheel is going to make those appear larger without changing the level whatsoever. So if you need to see more detail on stuff, this is a great way to do that. On Windows, it would probably be Alt and Control. Um, and then if you need to zoom in, Alt, just like the edit page, will zoom in. And then Shift will make the tracks much, much taller so you can see more detail on it. Now, the first thing I want to do is take out the low end. That's the first processing effect. I'm going to do that with the EQ over here. So just go to the tracks. So I'm on track one. You have a channel strip over here. Double click EQ. And there's just a simple, like, it's a high pass filter. It just basically means it lets the high frequencies come through. I hit that button. And this will just take any sort of low end rumble off. So if I click to play my track, story is everything. All of this end over here is just getting pulled down. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control. You might take this and change the frequency when it kicks in, so you might move it up a little bit if you had a not as deep of a voice. Um, Story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard. But the most important thing when you're doing audio processing is you have to listen to it. Even though you have these nice graphs, it's not, uh, you have to use your ears and trust your ears on what it sounds like. The next thing I like to take a look at over here is going to be the dynamics, and we're going to add a simple compressor to this as well. And so I will turn on the compressor by clicking that orange button that enables it. I turn this to like a three to one compression, and I've got other tutorials that talk about how all this works. Um, but I'm just giving you my basic settings right now. Story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control for editors who live in the cut. Story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control. You see I brought that down maybe let's say negative 26. Uh, this is all based off of the levels you recorded, but what I was looking for is this right here, this gain reduction slider for the compressor. That's what C stands for. I'm trying to get anywhere between a little compression to maybe negative three decibels of compression. And then once I hit that, I might take this makeup gain slider and push this up three to make up for what I had lost from the compression. And this just flattens out the dynamic range overall. The voice story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control. Now the final audio processing step that I think is essential for any time you are boosting levels um, is to put a limiter on the track itself. Now you cannot use this limiter over here. This is, I've been told it's a creative limiter, but it does not limit the signal of this makeup gain. You still can easily clip this. So what I suggest doing to finally boost and polish off this signal is to put a limiter as a track effect over here. So if you go to effects and then we go to, it's a, I guess it would be a dynamic Fairlight effects limiter. That's the one I use all the time. And this is basically going to make it so that I don't hit this red clipping uh, thing over here, which just makes things sound distorted 
and not good and, and pretty bad. So what I'll do is I'll set my ceiling, which is saying how far will I let that go to negative 1.5. And then I have an input here that I can boost stuff more as needed. So I could either boost it here or I could boost it here with the makeup gain to get the level at a nice healthy level. However, there is an important thing that you need to look at over here and that's the order of operations between the effects, dynamics, and the EQ. And if we want the limiter, which is an effects, to happen last, it needs to be moved so it's the last thing in the signal chain for this uh, processing that's happening here. So the, this is the default order that happens. I'm going to click here and just change it so I can choose a different order. And what I'm looking for is something that does the EQ first, and then the dynamics, and then the effects. So the EQ is sort of cleaning up the signal, that low end. The dynamics is compressing the high end so that there's not as much dynamic range. And then the effects, the limiter that I put on here, is to make sure I don't clip, I don't peak at all, but I can still pump up the gain as high as I need to. And because I didn't clip in the source, we'll be good to go. You come over here and we say loop, and I come back to the start. The story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control for editors who live in the cut. You see right there, I started to activate the limiter. Um, I'm going to bring it back down just a little bit below that so we're not actually hitting the limiter. Go back home. Story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control for editors who live in the cut. One more time. Story is everything. The Resolve Editor keyboard helps you refine every frame with speed, nuance, and control. And then one final thing you might do after these three steps is actually put a limiter on the final bus as well. Because if you're adding music and other things, they stack up and bring this bus to be a louder level. Go to Dynamics, Fairlight Effects, uh, Limiter, and then on this one you might just put a limiter at like negative one, and that'll make sure that your final output is not clipping at all. So now you know how to record audio using DaVinci Resolve 20, and because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.